I recently released a video called I Was So Wrong About the Holy Spirit. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And to recap, if you haven't seen it yet, that video was about the role the Holy Spirit plays in the believer and about the conviction that we have in our hearts from the Holy Spirit. Well, naturally, that opened a can of worms about once saved, always saved. So I want to address some of that here today and talk about that and where I personally stand on that based on what Scripture says. It's my desire here at Glasshouse TV that when we have these kinds of difficult conversations that are controversial to some, that we remember remain respectful in the comments section. We're not always going to agree with each other, but let's learn to walk in the fruit of the Spirit and respect our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're all at different places in our journey with the Lord. Some of us have more understanding of Scripture than others, so let's be patient in teaching and walking and working through some of these things together so that we may all grow up and build one another up in love. Capiche? All right, thank you. Now, when it comes to once saved all always safe. From what I've observed in the comments and a lot of people I talk to, the issue actually comes a lot from the phrase, once saved, always saved, because what does it mean to be saved? I've always said I don't feel comfortable telling people I believe in once saved, always saved, because to be saved has to be explained. What does it mean to really be in Jesus? With the nature of the American church, the Western church, and all of the different belief systems, all of the different whack things that are being taught that have deviated so far from scripture, I feel like you have to explain what salvation really is. So you could say, yes, I believe in once saved, always saved, but to the person who doesn't truly understand the biblical definition of salvation, that could lead them astray. So I avoid saying I believe in once saved, always saved for that reason, based on the phrase itself. But do I believe that the one who has been drawn unto the Lord by the conviction of the Holy Spirit, who knows they're a sinner in need of a savior. They've turned to Christ and said, Jesus, I receive that grace by faith, become Lord of my life. And now I'm going to follow you. I'm repenting of my old life. I'm turning. I'm coming into you, Jesus. Lead the way for that person that is abiding in Christ and following Jesus. Do I believe there is eternal security? I absolutely do. I believe what Jesus said in John 10, 28, and I believe he meant it when he said, I gave them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. So I do believe in eternal security for the one that is in relationship with Jesus and the one that is abiding in Christ. Do I believe that we can sin too much and lose our salvation? No, I don't believe we can lose it, okay? Another word that people get hung up on. I don't think you can lose your salvation, but do I believe you can forfeit your salvation? Yes, and there is a major, major difference. The reason why I say this is because Matthew chapter 24 exists, and Jesus answered them. Who is he talking to? He's talking to his disciples. See that no one leads you astray. And then what does he talk about? He talks about many will fall away, betray one another, hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. So this is called the great apostasy. Many of us are aware of the word apostate. It actually means the opposite of repentance. So instead of changing our mind and turning towards God, we're turning away from God. And my friends, this is a conscious decision that this person would make. Bringing up the quenching of the Holy Spirit and grieving the Holy Spirit has been something we've been talking about lately, and I believe this is something that occurs from quenching the Holy Spirit over a long period of time. You're shutting him out. He's saying, come back over this way. Come back over this way. You're righteous through what Jesus did. Remember what Jesus did. Remember you're in Christ, and you're saying, blah, blah, blah. I want to go my I don't want to listen to the law of God. I'm actually deciding I don't know that I agree with the law of God anymore. And then deception has a huge part of it, too. It talks about false prophets. So the enemy has a role in trying to deceive us here. And when over a long period of time we are deceived into not believing God's law anymore and believing some other doctrine, some other way that we've been led into by deception that we have forfeited over time, quenching the voice 
of the Holy Spirit, shutting out the Holy Spirit, ignoring it and choosing to believe a lie and choosing to walk another way, I believe over time you can fall into apostasy. And I do believe scripture supports that and makes that clear. I often explain this to people using the illustration of marriage. If one spouse wants a divorce, you cannot hold them hostage because of free will. You might fight for them. You might try and work things out. But at the end of the day, if they want to go, they're going to go. And the Lord will not hold us hostage. They might have started that relationship off saying, yes, I'm all in. I believe what you're saying. I'm here for the long haul. But somewhere along the way, they got deceived, distracted. They began to look over here elsewhere and subtly and slowly but surely became deceived and chose to ignore and outright reject that relationship. And that is what I believe Hebrews 6 is talking about when he says it's impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift and shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up to content. This is describing the believer turning their back on God, not God turning their back on the believer. When the believer says, yes, God, I see your way. I understand your law. I understand what Jesus did, but I don't want it. I don't want it anymore. I'm turning my back and I'm going to go to this other faith. I'm going to go to this other religion or I'm just going to live for myself and just completely ignore all of this. I wish I never would have known it. I don't agree with your law, God, and I'm going to walk away. That person has gone apostate. They have completely turned away from God consciously. This is not the person who just sinned, who made a mistake, who missed the mark. Completely different heart posture. This is someone who knows what they're doing and they're choosing to walk away. I hope you hear what I'm saying. So for that reason, I don't feel like you can say once saved, always saved, because there are possibilities that allow a believer to consciously walk away from the Lord, but the Lord will never walk away from us. One of the passages that gets used often is Hebrews 10, 26. And I must say, my friends, I have previously and in the past interpreted this scripture wrong. I have. I apologize. I repent. But what this scripture actually means is this. We've quoted this before in previous videos talking about how the Lord is is making a new covenant. He's talking to Jews here, right? Jews that have come to Christ. They are Christian Jews. And he's explaining the old covenant and the new covenant atonement sacrifice all of these things to these jews and they're talking about christ's sacrifice once and for all and then the full assurance of faith and all of hebrews has to be read with this understanding that he's explaining the writer is explaining to jews the old covenant into the new covenant to explain grace to explain jesus's sacrifice once and for all that they don't have to do this yearly so he's explaining to them how this works. You know, imagine if someone came today, dropped themselves into our lives today and said, I'm the Messiah. All of your religion and everything that you're believing has been about me. Now come follow me and how difficult that would be for some people to receive and understand. If we're putting ourselves in their shoes, it would be super hard to believe that and understand that. So that is the challenge here in explaining the old and new covenant. So what the writer is saying when we get down to verse 26 is if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. So how much worse punishment do you think it will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the spirit of grace. So what is the writer saying here? If you are a Jew 
and you were presented this message of the gospel and you understood Jesus' sacrifice once and for all. You understood what he did. You heard this. And what does it say? You had come to the knowledge of the truth right here and you became fully aware. And so now you're presented with, am I going to continue in my Judaism or am I going to follow Christ? Am I going to continue believing and walking the way I am or am I going to believe this new covenant and what Jesus did is sufficient? This is the decision they are faced with. And the writer is saying for the one who looks at this educated decision and chooses to remain, who rejects what Jesus did, that they are trampling underfoot what Jesus did on the cross. So this passage is not talking about somebody who sins too much and therefore they're outraging the spirit of grace. But that is what Hebrews 10, 26 through 29 is talking about. So this is where I'm at with once saved, always saved. Do I believe that we can lose our salvation because we've messed it up one too many times? Absolutely not. And the Bible makes that abundantly clear, but I do believe that over a long period of time of quenching the Holy Spirit and through deception that one can turn apostate and forfeit their salvation, but it's a conscious decision in doing so. They are turning their back on God. God is not turning their back on them. I would love to know what you think about this, and I would love to hear from you in the comments section. And remember, please, let's be respectful and love one another as we share. If you're not subscribed, I would really appreciate it. And hit that like button. That's the thumbs up button. And that tells YouTube to send this out to more people. And believe it or not, it really does make a big difference. But anyway, thank you so much for hearing me out and watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.